Okay, in this video I'm going to be working with a different chip. Um, it's a 18, or I'm sorry, 16F18 445, and you should be able to see it there on the breadboard, or the perf board. And um, I think everything's in view. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, so that's it right there. It's a 20-pin, a actually. I'm sorry, a 20-pin chip. So it means it has 18 I.O. ports. It's a little bit more hefty than the last one I had. And um, I'm going to be running a watch crystal as well, just so you can see how um, a, a, a crystal works or how it installs into a chip. And it's much easier than you'd think. Um, so this uh, stepper motor is being direct drive driven from this chip. I uh, don't usually advise that, but it's such a simple project. You could easily add a Darlington array or some sort of a driver circuit onto these IO pins, which I'm using four of them because as you can see, this motor has only four wires coming out of it. Uh, really, it's two coils. So two coils mean you have four wires feeding through and that's them right there. Um, anyhow, let's see what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna build a, um, a table, a lookup table in order to program this. And it's just simply something where data is pulled from to create the steps for this motor here. Um, okay, so how much of this page can we see here? Okay, so I'm gonna try and um, just explain the project in and how you wanna get from point A to point B. I think somebody said that would seem like a good way to explain things. So what you basically have is you have your chip. Sorry, my hand's definitely gonna get in the way here. You have your chip. And of course, this one here is a 16F18445. And it's 20 pins, so I'm gonna write out all 20 pins here. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm gonna write out the numbers associated with the 20 pins. Um, let's go backwards from 20. There you go. So that's all 20 pins. Um, with this chip, I happen to know that 20 is ground and one is positive voltage. Again, I could put anything I want on there from about three volts up to maybe six and a half. I'm gonna put five volts because that's the same as having four batteries here roughly. Maybe it's even more, maybe that's six volts right there. Um, okay, so the oscillator can only go on two pins. It has to go on pin two and three, as you can see right there. Is that right? Is that in the picture? Yeah, it is. Okay, so the oscillator has to go on pin two and pin three, and it will look like this. So it'll come down and it will have a little, what we call the drawing for a crystal. And then there's a couple <laughs> little, poorly drawn capacitors um, and they go back up into the ground there. I think they're about 50 picos. You could use anything from uh, 50 picofarads to, well actually 20 to about 100. And this here is a 32 um, kilohertz watch crystal. Now, um, we wanna put this motor here on it. And as, like I said, it has four little, um, and how do I know? You're probably saying, how do you know that your watch crystal has to go on there? Well, I'm glad you asked that and I'll tell you. Um, right here, I'm gonna turn this off for a second or move it out of the way. Um, right here in this document that you get offline, um, it's obviously the data sheet for the um, PIC 16F 18445. You'll notice that it says right here your oscillator is on pins. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's on uh, pin two and three. Why do I know that? Um, right up here, probably. Right there. OS1 and OS2. Your oscillator pins are on pin two and three. Uh, now, I also want to put four lines on something. I'm going to put it on these ones at this end right here. So 
Um, I'm basically putting it on a um, one of the ports. And here we go. This is what we have here. So I'm going to put, uh, okay, so that's where the oscillator is sitting right here, right between here and there. And I want to use these four ports here for IO. Um, and then I'll use four, five, six, and seven. RB0, uh, I'm sorry, RB4, RB5, RB6, and RB7. So that's these ones right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and by the way, this is actually a fairly um, easy to drive uh, stepper. Um, they have about 30 ohms per coil. It's called a, a NEMA 17, just in case you want to buy one. I think they're about 20 bucks. Um, but yeah, um, the way it would look like inside the uh, the stepper motor would look like that. Just two coils with two wires. And you can get an ohm meter on there and you can find out which wires belong to which. But in general, we'll put one directly attached to number 10, one directly attached to number 11, and the other two will be, a, other two legs or yeah, other two wires will be attached to 12 and 13. And that is the project right there, okay? Um, so uh, in this project, like I said, we're going to do a few things such as we're going to, um, as far as, oh yeah, this has 50 instructions inside this, um, this uh, chip or 50 instructions that you can use in assembler. Um, the, the assembler instruction is found in the data sheet, of course. It's about page, um, page 601. <laughs> and it's not very thick. Very small instruction manual. Uh, very simple. But we're going to, like I said, we'll use a lookup table to um, sort out the steps. And we're going to use a lot of these little functions or instructions right here. Obviously, in more detail, you can find out about them in this section here how to make, we'll do a lot of, um, oh yeah, we'll add a W or working register to a file register. Um, we're even going to um, add a W to an F. <laughs> add the working register to a file register. Oh, one thing I want you to know, and it's kind of um, to do our um, table, we're actually going to manipulate the um, program counter. And that's actually just, it's called uh, f uh, file register, file register, yeah, file register two. And that's called the program counter, the low eight bits anyhow. So we're going to manipulate that to create the, um, the lookup table and you'll see how that works. Um, we're also going to um, use, uh, this is called the bank select register. Um, that's by eight. And what you do is with this chip, because it's quite a large chip and it's got a lot of stuff inside it, it has more than just two banks. This thing has, I think, um, <laughs> uh, 64 banks. Yeah, it has, has 64 banks of information. There's one bank right there from a zero zero down to seven F. That's just one bank. And that's all the registers in that one bank. And that, that bank is actually bank zero. Um, and there's bank one right here. And I happen to have, like I say, 64 of them. It goes on and 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 on. And we're going to actually only go to a few of the banks. We're going to go to bank, um, zero and probably bank three E or basically, you know, uh, 39 or 60 something. Yeah, all the way down here. I guess it's um, bank 63. Um, we're going down to bank 3E and we will manipulate, um, oops, we'll manipulate that register right there. Um, that's an analog select um, byte for register or uh, port B. And we're gonna turn it all to digital by um, putting zeros in all these little 
uh, bit marks right here or in, in the, um, the file register. What else? Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to do down there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, what I did, I, you know, I don't know why it's probably set up. It's probably set up for, um, C the program language C and they don't necessarily approach programming the same way, um, with assembler. In, um, I should say microchip does not approach assembler in that way. Actually, they're steering away from assembler, trying to desperately get people over to C because it's probably a far more powerful language. Um, it's, you do have to spend time learning it. And I, I decided to be lazy and not learn it and stick with assembler because assembler is something that's very easy to pick up as an amateur. I don't need to spend a lot of time reading manuals. This is my manual. There it is right there. No. That's it. That's not even it. It's this one here. This is instruction manual. All of 15 pages or whatever it is. Very easy to learn. If you ever get a C book or a book on C, you'll know you're looking at a lot of pages and a lot of instructions. Um, it's very simple. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a very quick language because you're using just uh, one byte does an entire code or piece of instruction. Um, Whereas in C, you're using a lot of, well, mind you, the compiler cuts it down, but whatever. Um, so we're doing it this way. Um, so what I did is I wrote down what each bank is right here. So that's bank zero up to seven F. Bank one starts from eight eighty all the way down to F F obviously. And then bank two goes from 100 over to one seven F and bank three, so forth, so on. So I, this is how I've organized this entire thing. So bank 26 starts at address 1300 and goes down to 137F and it keeps going. Like I say, there are literally 64 of these um, banks in this um, chip and it's a lot of stuff in there, right? Um, some of the banks don't actually have much in them. If I go over to some of these banks, like look at 3B has almost nothing in there. All it has is the core registers as they call them, you know, things like the program counter and the status register and that sort of thing. So it's kind of, well, I guess it has a little bit of global, and I guess that's a core register. Um, yeah, so a lot of these registers don't have a lot in them or these banks don't have a lot in them. But some do, like, look at, here's um, bank 3C, has a whole bunch of stuff in it. Anyhow, um, yeah, we'll be mainly in, in bank zero and I will be manipulating some of these things. Okay, so we're actually, this right here is actually port B right there. So we're going to port B. Um, the way you set up port B, it's very conveniently that all the setup for the ports are all in bank zero. And we're gonna go over to um, register 13. They can call it Tris B. And we're going to make it an all output port because that's where our, our driver for our, um, our output for our stepper motors going. So these are all turned to output ports right there by basically clearing Tris B. And that's that's gonna be address 13. Then we're gonna run up to um, probably uh, this port B um, address 0D right here. And this is where we throw our um, information onto our ports our, our highs or lows, or our ones and our zeros actually. Um, this right here, the latch. The latch is usually used for doing certain functions. Um, there's actually a proper way to um, work with your ports. And I'm not actually, <laughs> I do it this way. Um, I actually don't even do much with the latching, but I believe what you do is you look at, uh, normally you look at the port and you extract information from and you latch it on with the latch. Uh, there's a little document inside um, this manual and you might want to read it. Um, I, I don't actually use the ports that way. Um, I'm sure they're very practical that way, but I don't use it that way. So this is my method. Um, you can, like I say, you can read up on, on how these three things, the port, the tris, and the latch all work um, their way. But again, I don't usually do that <laughs> anyhow so let's um get this thing programmed up um, let me first pop this uh, chip out of here um, and put it into my 
programmer over there. Oh, by the way, I did buy um, a pick kit four, as you can see right over here. And honestly, I don't really care for it. It doesn't really do anything different for me. Um, some people will use it. Um, it has, um, you can put a, on the side here, you can put a microchip or I mean, a, a micro memory chip, um, whatever, um, a card in there. And you can bring this along with, I guess, a USB port. I'm not sure what you'd use to power it up, but you can power up your project without a computer attached and, um, and drop in your program straight from there through this port. I, but I've never actually used um, a pick kit for that purpose. I've always just done everything right on a computer and mounted like this with that little breadboard attached. And it's always worked for me. Uh, but I guess the idea is people will go into the field and into a, a maybe a project or something they're working on or a, something and they'll be able to manipulate it by popping in a special chip in there and and transferring the data into another microchip in place um yeah so that's uh is that all i want to tell you about um yep oh yeah um yeah so that's that's basically um those little cap capacitors so with um when you're doing uh crystal oscillators usually it takes two capacitors as you can see in this picture um, is that is that drawn correctly? Yes, it is. Yeah, you have two capacitors here, and I'm using what they call NPO capacitors. And it's to do with um, more stability with temperature. Um, even with a crystal oscillator that's that's tuned to exactly a certain frequency, it will wander a little bit based on temperature. So um, even the capacitors cause it to wander a little bit. So um, you might choose your capacitors um, as NPO. Um, they're about the same price as all the other capacitors I've noticed. You buy 10 of them for a buck, roughly, it's something like that. Um, and that little watch crystal there, that might be maybe a dollar. I'm not even sure what they cost anymore. Um, and so it actually, this, this chip would be running at 32,768 cycles per second, or, or yeah, actually, I guess you have to divide that by four. That's about 8,000, there's an exact number, I can't remember what it was, Not, you know, 8,092 or something instructions per second, which is very slow, but I'm just using it as an example to show you how this all works. Uh, yeah, let's get this up here. And I know. This is redneck. And you know something? If you're ever curious why I'm so redneck with this thing, I save a lot of time from editing. Some guys will spend absolutely hours editing, the, editing their their videos, and ah man, it's so much work. This is not bad, <laughs> honestly. I don't mind doing this compared to what they have to go through. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, so let's get the um oh hey do you guys want to know how you can buy these chips a lot cheaper i'm going to spend a little bit of time here and show you how to buy directly from microchip they'll probably love me for this um hopefully <laughs> okay so um this here is the start page i'll get rid of that one right there Bink. um break all this down doesn't i Okay, so this is the start page, as you see. Um, the way you log in, you just have your own email address, you get one, um, you can register, whatever. Um, and I will log in and we will see how you can buy chips a lot cheaper. You know, obviously you're probably going to electronics store someplace, I don't know what, but... Um, I can't remember, is that my... Password? No, it was not. <laughs> Good try. Um, give me a second here. Let's try this one. Okay, so um, what you want to do to buy um, 
directly from microchip as you go over here, click right there. And of course they steer you over to their website. And um, you want to go over to the products here and microcontrollers obviously, because that's a microcontroller you're looking at, right? And um, eight bit microcontrollers. You'll find that you can't actually do the 16 bit microcontrollers the way I teach, but by all means you can buy them. You just learn C and you're fine, right? Um, now there are, they actually have three different types of microcontrollers. Um, Atmel, I believe is a company right here. Um, and they sell microcontrollers as well. The instructions are quite different. The training would be totally different. Uh, maybe 8051 might be an Intel processor. I'm not sure. Um, anyhow, these are the, the processors. These are the 8-bit microcontrollers from PIC. And we click on that. And um, you wait for a little bit while it builds and builds and builds. And then you have a list of all your microcontrollers. And I'm telling you, this will go on for literally for 200, maybe more <laughs> of these um, things. So the way it works is if you want to go and buy um, some chips, let's say you're into, um, this is this is only like a six pin chip, pretty small. Um, they're about 41 cents a piece if you buy 5,000 at a time. Roughly the price would be double when you buy um, like 30 of them at a time. So you could see that'd be 80 cents times 30, be about $24 for buying 30 of them. I, you know, the reason why I suggest 30 is because if you buy like one or two, that's a lot of shipping for like one or two chips. And if you blow one up, you're going to be really sad because you only had one. But if you had 30, you know, in a hobby like this, it's very easy to bend a chip when you're pulling it out of a, out of a breadboard or drop it on the floor and step on that. I've done it all. <laughs> or, you know, walking across the floor with carpet, with running shoes, and get enough stack on it to blow the daylights out of it. Um, there's so many ways to wreck a chip. Okay, so I'm suggesting 30 at a time when you buy chips, and you're not going to be paying much more than a buck 20 for a chip. So you can see it's going to be, you know, yeah, and even when you buy it, there's like 800 pages of technology you have to read through for free mind you the, the the pages on all the manuals are all free the data sheets actually but you know if you buy um 30 chips at least you've got a good amount of chips and you've spent a lot of time learning about these chips and you're not going to be jumping around between chips because there's a lot to learn between the chips anyhow so down here you can see there's a lot of um choices and you can i you know everybody goes after certain things differently like some people are really interested in the price point Roughly, you can run this up maybe anywhere from 30 to 80% more of what you see there is what you have to pay for like buying 30 at a time. Um, I usually go after things like um, pin count. I don't like a lot of real estate taken up on my breadboard. So I go for as low pin count as possible. So things like eight pins, 18 is a little bit rich for me. I, I don't do too many projects that use 18 pins, but you know, you, you, know, you might be after a 20 pin chip, right? It's still, it's probably going to be under a buck for you if you want to buy it. Um, and maybe other people are really interested in the, the speed of the oscillator or the maximum speed of the processor. It depends what you want. Maybe you want um, uh, a lot of comparators. This one has two comparators. Um, maybe operational amplifiers. This has two, but this one has none. And not just that, but there's so many other attributes. Like as you go along here, you can see there's more things you want to analog to digital converters or you want um, zero cross detection oops sorry <laughs> um, which is a feature used for some weird stuff um, yeah so you've got so many things um, and you got timers I mean you, everybody's got math accelerators um, and oh I2C it's to do with the serial programming on memory chips um, yeah there's so many different things that if you are really into looking for a chip that you want to program, by all means, you wander through here, you might spend like a whole night and a 12 pack of beer going through this thing, trying to figure out what you'd like to buy. Um, like I say, it's relatively cheap. It'll cost less than that 12 pack of beer. <laughs> um, but in the long run, um, yeah, don't, don't take something that says in production, please consider device 
that means that it's old and they're they're probably saying you should probably try a different device because if you're going to actually start building up an invention or a device or something like this it might be outdated and you might not get another one of these things in the near future so look don't even bother with anything that has this on the side anything that says it's in production that would be oops um, that would be a something you want to consider. Um, but yeah, so for instance, let's see, I wander down here. Um, um, what do I want? Maybe I want, um, oh, that one's old anyhow. <laughs> okay, so let, let's say I'm looking for something like that. Oh, there's a, a nice 20, 20 pin chip right there. Um, and I like that, that's a great chip. Um, you can wander over here, you can click on buy, and we're just gonna see what they have here. So this is a, what is it that we looked at? I think it's thinking. Okay, so this is a PIC 16F 15344 that we found. Um, we obviously don't want a surface mount. That that would be very hard to, to work as a, a hobbyist. But if you notice, there's different types of packages down here. I go down a little bit farther, and that's kind of what I'm looking for, right? That's a uh, what they call a P-dip package. And that package goes onto our little um, breadboards and our perf boards, and that's easy. This is too hard to... Um, solder on anything unless you're really good at what you do. Some guys can do that. Okay, so and, and here's a price point. So this one actually because it's a different package, it's a buck 18 for 5,000. If you get let's say 25, maybe 30 at a time, it'd be a buck 40 each. But just wait, I'm not finished here. Mm, yeah, and, and you know something, they're not all, this is actually fairly high price for a chip of this size. Um, see, I'm skimming down farther, as you can see. I'm looking for what other choices we have. Um, well, I've got a lot of choices there. Eh? Okay, that's good enough for me. Okay, so let's go back and see if I can find another chip. That was a little bit high priced for that chip. Um, a variety of reasons. I don't know why. Maybe because it's um, older technology. The newer stuff is usually a better price. Oops. Um, so... Let's skim down here and find something of interest. Um, how about the one I have right now? Okay, so the one we're working on right now, it's way down here. I already know the price point where it is. So <laughs> I can skim down pretty quick to find it, right? It's way down here. I'm going way down. Um, it's right about here. This one right here. The PIC 16F 18445. It is running at 32 megahertz and has 20 pins. And it's a buck seven if you bought a whole bunch, but we only want to buy 30, let's say. So what did it cost to buy 30 of these, these chips here? Um, so obviously I don't buy that one. I'm going to won't buy that one or that style or that style or that style. Nope. Uh, uh, no. Oh, okay. Now. Okay. So this one right here, I paid a buck 89 for about 30 chips times, that would be f uh, 50, what is that, 54 bucks, $55? Yeah, for, for a hobby and 30 chips will last you forever. If you actually invent something and you bring it to market, the chip has almost no, um, no uh, depth of cost compared to everything else that you did. So, you know, when you actually go through a whole bunch of research and development and you build a device, and I, I assume I'm probably talking to a portion of the people who are actually thinking of building something to bring to market, the chip is the least at a buck 89 a piece. It's so small a number that your labor alone was huge. $2 was nothing. So when you start looking at the price of the chips, um, you know, under four bucks is usually something that's fine. Um, because you're probably going to sell whatever you're going to sell for hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands, depending on what you're building. Um, the things I've sold, um, the chips were usually a buck a piece for the tiny ones. And I would make $300 for each product I sold, which had maybe $10 of parts in it. Um, so yeah, chips are usually a very small number when you start looking at the price of what it took to build something. Anyhow, um, there's actually a, a variety of different uh, chip types. This one here, if you notice it says P-dip, 
uh, the temperature range from minus 40 Celsius to 85 Celsius, which is about 200 Fahrenheit um, up there on the top and minus 40 Fahrenheit at the bottom. Um, you can obviously see that you'll probably never, hopefully never achieve even remotely close to those numbers. But if you look down here a little bit farther, this one right here is what we call the extended version. That's what the E and the EP stands for right there. Um, it means it goes up even hotter, up to probably about 100, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know if you'd ever need that sort of thing, and most people would never buy this and pay the extra 20 or 30 cents a chip for that sort of thing. But anyhow, um, yeah, so you kind of look through all their choices, and you, you look at what you want, you like what you like. Um, click on whatever you want, you know, you 30 and add to the cart, and pay and wait for it. This one here, you order now, um, it ships out December the 8th. Okay, um, they only have 19 in stock. Whew, <laughs> that's not that many. But here's a, I mean, I've seen this a few times. Um, additional quantities expected in October, 2023. Oh my goodness, guys, don't even buy that chip. You're waiting until when? That's a year from now. That's crazy. No, no, don't even get a chip that you have to wait that long. You'd forget your hobby. You'd forget what you're doing at that distance. Maybe order 19 and I don't know. But what if you didn't get that 19 and somebody else grabbed it just before you? You'd be stuck waiting for your chips to arrive. Anyhow, that's uh, all I have to do to say on, on purchasing stuff from Microchip and close. Okay, so we're back to here. We're going to start off and program this um, chip. So we're going to start off and as usual, I click on this right here and I run over. Oh, by the way, I'm using um, my um, MP Lab XIDE version 5.2. Do not use anything beyond that. I did try a 5.35 last time. I was not happy with it. Went back to 5.20 because um, the 5.35 was a little glitchy with Assembler. Um, assembler is a language they're phasing out on a lot of their platforms. Um, if you don't like Assembler and you want a higher level language like C, by all means stop the video and go somewhere else. Anyhow, um, I'm doing a standalone project next. And now what do I have there? I believe I have a, um, a 16F, oops, let's go for the capital lock, 18445. And there we go. There's my pick kit four right there, which I don't think is all that great. I think I'll probably go back to my pick kit three. And there's the assembler 5.84. Oh, I, you know, there's something I wanted to tell you also. One other thing. So if you go along and you, you decide you have a chip that you want, you go in here and you type it out and in this here spot, if it doesn't show up in that list of devices, then uh, version 5.20 of MPLAB XIDE will not support it. You would have to move up from 5.2 to maybe 5.8 or 6.2 or something. You'd have to move up and you'd be outside of the usable range of or the simplicity of this style of programming. Not to say you couldn't use Assembler, but you would have to download a few um other programs to make it run and it becomes very fiddly um i'm just staying out of that whole thing keeping life a little simple with the way i program and yeah you know, i can still uh, program current model 2022 stuff um uh, it's just you have to find it and you have to check and see if it if it shows up on your device selection here and there's that yep Boink. um let's call it test um Oh, I'll call it step two. Step two. And finish. So I go over here, step two, source files. I click um, on the left and the right again. And then I go over here and I click, left click that is, on here. And it's going to ask me what I want. And I want it to be called test two. And we're finished here. Okay, so I think I'll keep only the end statement there and get rid of all this. 
Um, okay, so I, you know, a lot of this stuff is what you have to do every time you start up um, a new project. It's just simply the, the routine you have to go through. Um, can't avoid it. It's just mandatory. You have to go along and select what kind of chip you need because nobody else knows besides you. You have to select what kind of pick start kit you're using. I'm using pick start four or pick kit four. Um, yeah, you have to run through all these things. And the other thing, the only other thing you have to do is go into production and you're going to select all the attributes on that chip on a big long list and tell it how you want that chip to run so that when the compiler um, tosses everything into the chip, it also sets up the configuration bits to make that chip run a certain way. Like we've, um, we've talked about making the chip run uh, with a external crystal oscillator. And that's that one right down there. And as you can see, it's going to try and uh, run it at 32.768 kilohertz. Well, it's, it actually probably would be fine for anything up to about 100 kilohertz anyhow. But yeah, um, then I'm going to turn everything else off. I don't need to have everything on. Everything else is, um, I mean, if you understood what they did, that'd be great and you could use them. But um, currently we're making a really simple program and it's not too complicated here. Did I, um, did I use the watchdog timer on the last video? Um, I was thinking of doing it. Um, maybe I will in the next one if I hadn't yet. But um, yeah, watchdog timer is useful as well. Um, zero cross detection. Uh, nope, not ever used. I've used, I've repaired equipment that uses it. Um, anyhow, that is it. I got everything here, right? Um, yeah. So now we generate some source code. And this is what we have to stick at the very top of our, oops, that's bad. Um, we'll cut and paste or copy and paste. Um, we're going to put that at the very top of our program here at the very top. And um, that is all the stuff we got from that little, um, we did. So what I want to do is as usual, define the origin of the code and it's going to be starting at zero, zero. It's always starting at zero, zero with me. Um, one day we'll start at a different spot. <laughs> no, if you're gradually building code and you want to add some more code somewhere, you, you would tuck it in higher up. But this is all that we have. Actually, maybe I'll just tap this one along one more step. Get this way out of my way. Actually, I don't care. The, the end is kind of, I'll, I'll add it later on. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, so we're gonna start off and do some programming here. Um, Get my little cheat sheet here. I bet you I've already gone through like 35 minutes. You guys are probably thinking, oh, oh 38 minutes. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay, so <clears throat> we're over here. Okay, so um, let's start off by um, working on the uh, running up the banks and changing the, um, the analog select bits so that the uh, port B will be a digital port, okay? So I'm gonna actually do a little bit of typing and then I'll, ex oops, great. I'm gonna do a little bit of typing and I'll explain what I'm doing, okay? That way. Hmm. Actually, you know something? I think I'll just change this to, um, yeah, I'll do it this way and then I'll explain why I'm gonna change it to something else. Again, I think I probably might have done this before, right? Um, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, Good. 
Okay, so um, what I'm doing here, this is our first five lines of code, of real code. Like I said, that's all directives up there. They don't really count for much. So disregard that. <clears throat> so um, what you can see here um, in our first five lines of code is um, I've, I've banked over to bank 3E. That's what moved literal into a banking register. I put 3E in the banking register. So the program jumped over to uh, register bank 3E, which as I mentioned was way near the back of the book um, that I was showing you. And I cleared file register 38. Um, file register 38. I could have actually, um, in these file registers, they actually do have names. So um, file register 38 is actually N cell B. If I typed out, oops, if I typed out right here, um, it would accept that as what 38 really means. Because if you look in this book that I mentioned on page um, 597 and 98, 99, <laughs> well, 599. You'll see down there, um, hey, I didn't really want to change three. Hey, I want to change three, uh, four, three. Um, looking for this for a second. Um, hey, you know some. This is um, my cheat sheet is, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I want to change actually. Um, so I'm actually setting up port B and I want to change um, uh, 43 actually. Let's go back and change that. It's a mistake. Um, 43. So let me just change this. I didn't realize there was something on there. So I, I could call it NCEL B, but a lot of times I just keep to the same sort of style of programming. And it, it has two ways to um, to describe that particular byte. You could describe it as a mnemonic, or you could describe it as its position or its register number. And that's what I've done as a file register is actually 43. Anyhow, I've changed it by clearing it out and created uh, what we call digital IO port and B port. And then I've run over to, I've gone back over to moving the literal into banking register is zero, zero. So it's gone back to register bank zero, zero. And, um, I've cleared file register 13 in bank 00, and I cleared file register 0D. Let me just double check that um, that is what I want to do. 13 is good, and 0D, okay, good. So um, when I cleared 13, I set up the IO port as an output port because every zero on every bit represents an output, as you know from my last three or four videos. And then, um, on this particular chip, anyhow, um, register 13 was actually setting up the port and register zero D is actually, um, where you put your, uh, contents on the port or on the IO port. So let's, um, and actually, by the way, you see the pink or the red, depending on what kind of screen you have, the pink here, it says it's not happy with it. It won't complain too much. Always define it as hexadecimal by putting zero and a X in front of a number that has a hexadecimal variable in it or hexadecimal number. So anyhow, so I've done that just to make sure I don't have any, uh, any complaints from the compiler. So let's get some more code going here and just let me uh, type all this in and then I'll talk in a bit. So what I'm going to do here 
is I am going to get some more content here. Okay, so I've incremented a file register. I choose 20. I can choose anything from file register 20 all the way up to probably, um, actually, I can even go from 1B all the way up to 7F. Um, so I have a lot of registers to play with here. Um, but anyhow, I just chose 20 as my my variable here, my file register to increment. And I'm just incrementing um, a variable or a file register that I can read off of that will always be sequentially going upwards. Um, so in which case, the next instruction down here, I'm um, putting a 20 into the working register. And then from there, I'm anding, <laughs> remember Boolean algebra? Um, I'm anding the working register with file register 20 and then putting the answer back into the working register. So what I'm really doing is I'm isolating out the last three bits of register 20. And then that is being put into W and I'm going to call a table, which I will use down here to take that working register number and pick out a number in my my um, table, my lookup table, I believe. <laughs> yeah. My lookup table. What do we call this? We'll call this table. Yeah, I think I said that. Um, so anyhow, okay, so it, it, it might seem a little confusing, but it's actually brilliant. <laughs> um, so this right here, I think I mentioned this to you. Um, okay, here it says, Okay, this, is a, this is where it goes. It gets a call, goes all the way down to here, call table. Table is add the working register to file register 02 and then put the contents back into file register number two. Number two, register two, happens to be the program counter. I'm actually manipulating the program counter. So program counter would be currently at, I don't know, 34 or something. No, it's not really. I can't remember what it's at. But it's going to then... Um, advance the program counter whatever the number is that's been um, what was W. So if W was, for instance, when I asked, isolated out the last three bits, if W happened to be a six or a three, whatever it is, it's going to jump down in my right down below here um, to one of these little lines, well, three lines down if it's a three, but actually, yeah, um, or four actually. So um, give me a second here. We'll have a look at what I'm going to do as it manipulates the data here. Um, give me a second. <laughs> what was I going to do here? Spell. So I, let me think. Uh, twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six. Um. Yeah. Okay. And Wait, what did I do wrong here? I put a O. <laughs> See, that's actually an O. I made a mistake. Wow. Um, yeah, there you go. So that would be, let me just type in an end here because I know there's not much more. Okay, so when I um, I do this, I increment 20, put it uh, back into itself. Then I come down, I move a literal into a working register and number seven, and then I end that number seven or the working register with the file register 20. And it's going to isolate off the last three bits because that's how and works. Um, I could say Boolean algebra. Oh, you have to kind of read up on it. Is that Boolean algebra? I'm pretty sure it is. Anyhow, um, it puts it back into the working register. When I call the table, it runs down here um, and it ends the, the W, the last three bits of that byte with file register 02. It shifts the program counter down 
to whatever that number was. It's something between zero and seven, because if you'll notice, I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight here. So it's basically one of eight is what I'm looking for. And um, to explain what this is, I would have to explain how the stepper motor worked. Um, these are these are actually um, creating um, wave shapes on the lines on the on the I/O ports that will cause the stepper motor to wave along. And I believe it's like a half step or something like that. I can't remember, but that this information here would be um, something that you'd, I'd have to explain to you in a whole new video. Um, just suffice to say that this is how the stepper motor moves. It moves with a wave of eight different steps, creating eight different waveforms laid onto those four wires to create the motor to turn. And um, going backwards through a number, or this number here, if I decremented this number, the motor would turn the other way. Anyhow, let's press on after, oh yeah, basically return literal and dumping. So when it gets down to one of these things here, it returns, it goes straight from here, it returns with this 40 in the W register, right back to there. Now, isn't that brilliant? I think that's fantastic. All right, I'm really pumped. Um, move, what's it say here? Move, W, file register. Okay, yeah, move, W, and file Give me a second here. Um, I know you think this is yeah, really, um, what have you got yourself into? Um, zero D, hang on for a second. I guess, you know, this number, you can actually change this, whatever you want. That's the wrong one. <clears throat> um, let's try learning how to type. create a delay here. So um, what I'm going to do here is uh, because every step I need to create a little bit of a delay so the step stops and it quickly um, is thought about by the <laughs> by the mechanism. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, explain how um, matter works. <laughs> about it. I believe that's this, the whole program right there. So let's close up a little bit here. So um, right here, called the table, it came back with uh, whatever number it was that it picked out. Um, and then it goes and it puts the W into file register OD. Now OD happens to be the IO port. It's going to throw it straight to the IO port when it gets it. So it's going to throw it to the IO port for um, B, for port B, straight to those four pins we we're talking about. And now I need a little bit of a delay. So I'm going to move. Um, I didn't really need to do this. This is pointless. I could get rid of this. Um, yeah, but if you want to slow, if you want to speed up your motor, you'd change these numbers here. Um, I tell you what, I'll get rid of these two things. They're kind of. Um, yeah, let's, let's get around just for you. Okay, so, so it's gonna come along, it's gonna create a delay, and it's gonna decrement, there, it's gonna be a little loop here, and it's gonna loop around for about um, a small amount of time. Hmm, I don't know, I can't remember how much time that is. Um, it's actually uh, 250, it's 750 or 760, um, steps mm, times four is 2,800, maybe 3,000 on a 32,000, maybe a tenth of a second, maybe. Yeah, I guess about a tenth of a second per step. And then it's going to go back and do the whole thing again right here and increment uh, register 20 again. And obviously it's shift, it's changed a little bit now. 
and it's going to move that into um, uh, itself. But then the working register is going to end with 20 and it's going to grab a table, probably the next one down and and put that into um, onto port B and then another delay and then go back to start. And it's going to be repeating that. So it'll be step, step, step every tenth of a second. It'll do a step. And that's it. So now I want to program that into my chip. So I'm first going to compile it. Oh, by the way, okay, so your program's really going this to there. All the rest is directives and stuff that doesn't really matter. You know, obviously it's, it is important. The end statement's very important. The org statement is very important. All those things are very important, but they're just necessary things that will always be in your program. Um, the green things are remarks. You can delete them if you think they're in the way. Doesn't matter. They will not affect your program. You should write remarks. It's just generally a wise idea. Um, I usually write my remarks here and I just type out whatever I want. I don't really have anything to say here, but you know, in another, like I said, another year, you'll forget what you're doing. And if this was something that was really important to you um, and you sold um, a product that's in production and you needed to change one variable, you'd want to know what that variable looked like. And you'd have to read through the entire program and try to figure out what you did one year later, because it's very hard to try and figure it out just by glancing at it. Um, this would make no sense to me in a year if I did not come back to this. Um, all these numbers here, I would not be able to explain unless I typed it all right here and said which um, step I was manipulating in which program. And even um, I'll go as far as to say which um, um, version of lab, uh, MP lab I'm using. And um, I'll specify that I'm using a 32 kilohertz chip and I'll specify that I'm using a NEMA 17 um, stepper motor and this is the date I did it in and all those things. Um, and also, you know, not that it matters at this point, but uh, there is actually a lot of things you could do to beef up um, a project like this. Like you should be throwing a capacitor across your VCC and your VDD, maybe like a 0.1 or even a, a one microfarad cap across these things. Cause there's a lot of EMF coming off of a stepper motor as it's doing its thing. Um, you could throw uh, diodes in certain spots, but uh, in this example, it's not necessary, but if you're going to production with something, you definitely want to um, check over your project many times under many conditions. I've just pressed the hammer here, by the way, and this is what uh, builds or compiles the program. It said it came out good, build successful. Now I'm gonna, I've got the chip in my pick kit three. I'm now I'm gonna install the program into the chip. And it goes through here and it goes along and it starts the program. I'm gonna just tip this camera down so you can see, oops, it's saying, oh, no, I forgot. I think, did I remember to, okay, I was gonna explain this to you. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, um, what I forgot is I have to add five volts onto my pick kit for, um, well, actually I have to add it onto the chip. So I'm gonna go over here and it, it pulls the five volts from the, um, from the USB port. So I'm going to go over to uh, step two, uh, project properties. I'm going to run over to pick it for, I'm going to run over to the memories to program and actually go running down to the power. And I'm going to change it so that it has five volts on the target circuit. And then I'm just going to say apply. Okay. And now I'm going to do that little, uh, install it back into the chip and it'll go this time. And it'll be good. Keep going, keep going, erasing. Oh, that's great. That's nice. Okay. Configuration program verified complete. Excellent. So let me just uh, point this down like this. So right about here is where you want to be. Okay. So let me, um, did I get this in? The, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> sorry for such a long program. Uh, so here's my chip and here's a bit more light and I pop it into my little breadboard here right about here bring my little thing over and I plug in my 
five volts into here and yeah so <laughs> remember I, I um, deleted two lines those two lines back there um, if you change that from the zero zero you know moving a literal into the working register if you change that to maybe an 80 which is half of zero, um, the full byte this will run twice as fast if you change it to a 40 it'll run even faster and a 20 and all the way down I believe and I'm, like I said I'm, I'm driving this on maybe a 25 milliamp um, driver inside here um, you can probably get it down to as low as I don't know um, it'll run um, 50 times faster or something like that maybe 80 times faster but you won't exceed um, 60 rpm without a real driver anyhow guys thanks for watching Enjoy. Take care.